Good afternoon guys, Mac here. Now I recently changed over from my uh, iPhone XS Max to a Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. And I also changed my Apple Watch over to a, a Samsung Galaxy Watch. Now there's several reasons why I did this and I've done a separate video on this and I, I haven't published it as yet because everything I've seen about getting in the middle of the iPhone versus the Android world it just seems to be well grounds for a big argument and I'm not sure I'm down with that people seem to completely lose their objectivity and they, they get so invested in their own platform I will, I will say though the main reason I gave it a go is because I'm interested in technology and I kept hearing how good the the S10s were and I thought I'll give it a go and see if that was actually the case and for the most part I've had a great experience shush now one thing I did miss from my iPhone of course was iMessage because I know I know for example that WhatsApp and all that sort of good stuff are, are by far the biggest platform but for me the vast majority of my friends are pretty much all on iPhone so I was missing out on the iMessage experience. Now I was a little bit surprised to find that you could actually put iMessage on an Android and I'm going to take you through that. Now the software itself is free but free is never actually that free is it you do need a platform to run this software on and essentially that is a mac os machine which of course does have a cost to it now also that machine needs to be on all the time but it does give you access to iMessage there are also a couple of other caveats as well so iMessage will only work with email addresses it won't work with my phone number so what will happen is the people receiving my iMessage will actually receive the message from my iCloud registered email address or whatever email address you've registered with iCloud. But it does basically work and it works pretty well and it's pretty easy to set up. So let's go and have a look at that and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so let's have a look at what we actually need to be able to do this. Well, the first thing you need is your Apple Mac. So I'm gonna use a Mac mini for this. There's our Apple Mac, although the icons for an iMac, obviously. Now on the iMac, we're gonna have two things. We're gonna have the AirMessage piece of software, which I'll put the link to in the description. And we're also gonna configure the iMessage client. You know you can send iMessages from your Mac machine. Now, of course, that, that machine needs to be configured for iMessage and it also needs a, an internet connection to be able to work. Just something like that. I mean, that's roughly how most people's internet is configured. Now what we're going to do is take our Android phone, put the AirMessage client on it and connect it to that server. Like that. Now essentially what happens is the AirMessage client on your Android phone actually sends messages to that little application running on your Mac machine which then passes it to the iMessage client which then of course goes and sends the message for you. Now it works in the other way as well so if you get an incoming message on iMessage it passes it to AirMessage and then out to your Android. So let's go and have a look at the configuration of this in the real world. So here we are on my machine that I use to run AirMessage. So what I'm gonna do is fire up AirMessage. I'm gonna find the application. You can of course use uh, Spotlight if you want. There it is, AirMessage. Now there's not much of an interface to this, but what you will see is it pops up there in the toolbar, it's that up arrow. Now there's not much configuration. It's very, very simple to do. We're gonna click on it. We're going to go Preferences. Now what we want to do in the preferences is set a port. So the port is the port that the uh, unit, the gateway is gonna be listening on. I've got 5050 set. You also need to set a password for your client to connect to because it does actually encrypt your messages. So I'm gonna go with port 5050. I've also entered a, a demo uh, password for this, which is there. Okay, and you can also see that it does update checks automatically and also how often it actually scans for messages. Now that's all there is to the server component. Now you then need to leave that running for your iMessage to work on your Android phone. Now, how do you keep your Mac awake? Well, I use something called Amphetamine, which is this small application here, that one. And what that will do is it'll stop your Mac going to sleep. Now that's how I do it. There's various other ways of doing it. You'll see that this machine, for example, has Plex running. It's also got a ton of virtual servers running as well. So that's all we need on the Mac side of the world. So let's go and have a look and see what, what we need on the, uh, the actual Android phone. So here we are in our Air message. Now I've got messages in there already because I've been using it. But what I'll do is I'll show you how to configure it. If we pop into settings, now there's all kinds of stuff in here you can have a look at, but what we're interested in are the settings down the bottom for the server. So if we hit the edit server information, 
Now in here, you'll see the IP address of my server, which is 10.1.1.4 for the purposes of this demo. Now the important bit is that colon and the port number at the end, because that is the port number that we set in that server client. Now also, you have to enter the password here. So my demo password is that one, which of course is not what I'm gonna leave it at. And what it will do is it will then go off and connect to the server. Now I've already done this, so I'm gonna skip this stuff. But now that's ready to go. So now, if I wanted to, I could actually send a message to someone. So let's pick on my friend Jason. And off that message will go, it'll hit my server and then go out from my server through that air message gateway. And that's all there is to it. Now, it works really, really well. I've been using it uh, in anger for probably the last month or so, and it's, it's quite effective. Now what we've just done, we've configured this so my air message would work just fine while I'm on my home Wi-Fi. But what about if I want to make it work outside, you know, when I'm out on 4G or something like that? Well, you can do it and I'm going to show you how to do it. I mean, this is how I do it anyway. So we're going to go back to my original diagram. You can see we've got our air message running on our Apple Mac. It's running and listening on TCP 5050 and we've got our router connection out to the internet. Now what we need to do is configure some port forwarding on our router. There we go. So what I've done is I've configured my my internet router to forward any incoming packet on 5050 to my air message server on 5050. Now this is where you can run into a problem. If your internet provider changes your IP address now and again it's going to be a pain constantly having to change the IP address in your air message client to connect to your service. Now there is a way to fix that and that's something called dynamic DNS. In this scenario, what you do is you point your air message client to a DNS entry, which you know isn't your direct IP address, which may change. And what the dynamic DNS service will do, it, it will map your IP address on your service provider to that, uh, that domain name. So for example, I could configure mine for me.dynamicdns.com and that would resolve to the IP address of my router. Now because of that and we've got port forwarding set up, we can now use the service out on the internet and on 4G and that sort of stuff. Now you do run into another issue there is because that address, that me.dynamicdns will resolve to the external IP address of my router. Now that could cause you a problem trying to use the platform internally on your home Wi-Fi because chances are your router doesn't support something called hairpinning. So when it tries to resolve that address, it's gonna get the address of the external side of your router and not be able to connect to your server. Now the way you can deal with that is by setting up your own little DNS server and all of a sudden this is getting way more complicated. And what it does is it resolves that dynamic DNS name to the IP address of your server. So in our case, that would be R10114. So when it when your client connects to that same DNS, when you're on your Wi-Fi, you're gonna get the internal IP address. When you're external, you're gonna get the external IP address of your router. Now, it could be that you'll find that if you just set up that dynamic DNS server, to connect to the external side of your router, you may find that this works anyway because a lot of routers do support that hairpinning model. But if it doesn't, there is stuff like that that you can do to get around the, the issue. So that's about it. It is very, very easy to do. It works really well. I'm quite impressed with the software and I suspect I'll be leaving it on this phone. Well, certainly as long as I stay on Android anyway. And hopefully I will get around to publishing my Android findings against my, you know, kind of what, when have I used iPhone since what, 2007, 2008? So that could be an interesting video. Anyway, any questions on it, of course, feel free to mention it in the comments and I'll, I'll see if I can answer them for you.